Hi and welcome to this tutorial of the new cylindrical projection node that you can now download off maori.ideascale.com. This tutorial is going to be split into two parts. The first part will just focus on how to accurately position the 3D projection, um, especially on randomly rotated objects. And the second part will go more in detail over the uh, different options that the node has. And you can see I've set up a sample scene already that shows kind of what the node can do. And I'm just going to set something up from scratch. I'm going to use this one object in, in the back here and delete the existing cylindrical projection and set it up from start. And it's quite a big node, but uh, it's actually quite easy to use. And there's just a lot of options for different things. But it's actually pretty straightforward. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to define the cylinder pivot. And the cylinder pivot, if we look at it in the sample, is the point, the center point of the cap of the cylinder. So the red, um, the red part here is the projection, or supposed to be the projection, and the pivot you're defining in the cylinder pivot group is this point down here. So how do we get this point from this cylinder? Well, first thing we want to do is we want to turn on the display object position as color value. And that will convert the x, y, z position of the point I'm sampling into uh, x, y, z, uh, into RGB value. So we should be able to sample it. I'm going to use the pixel analyzer power for this. And by default, Mari will have the colors I'm sampling clamped. So if I click something here, you can see the values are either below 1 or 1. So it's not really useful for us in a uh, X, Y, Z kind of way. Luckily, it's pretty easy to change, especially in Mari 2.6. There's a little button in the right-hand corner of your screen that says LDR by default, and if you click on it, it'll switch to HDR. And that will unclamp any pixel sampling, and also will a, uh, will change the bit depth of your virtual texture size internally. If you don't have 2.6 yet, you can get the same effect by going to the painting palette. Under paint buffer, there's the clamp button here, and if you click on LDR, HDR down here, you see that is one of the things that is being changed and we want it off. So now if I click on the center point that I want the projection to be aligned to, I'm getting values below zero and above one. So I'm going to transfer those values into the x, y, z coordinates of the, so, into the x, y, Z coordinates of the uh, cylindrical projection node. And turn off the display object position. And I'm going to scroll up in the node and turn on a debug pattern, which just helps me to visualize where everything is. You can see the star shaped pattern here makes a good indication of where your center point is supposed to be. So I'm going to scroll down and use the secondary offset sliders to modify the star shape like a bit better to get more into center. And my scene seems to be quite small, so I'm just going to set the slider values under the transform helpers quite low. And that will multiply against the offset sliders. So I have finer control and more range in my sliders. So let me just sort of set this center. That looks reasonably accurate. And you can see my projection is already perfectly aligned. So if I were to bring in a, a color map, just drag it in here, turn off the debug pattern. Now everything should be as it's supposed to be.
And in this case, I didn't have to do any rotation at all. And that is because this cylinder is a separate object that was brought in through Alembic. And if you do that, then the object will maintain some of its local coordinate system. So we don't usually have that luxury, especially, you know, when you bring in a combined object like this. So in this case, it's only one object consisting of multiple cylinders. So if we just do the same thing again and set a cylindrical projection up, turn on the display object position, click sort of in the center, transfer the values, and turn on the debug pattern you can see immediately something is quite misaligned and rotated so we need to fix that so the first thing I want to do again is because the object is quite small I'm gonna change the slider range slightly or the multiplier for the sliders and then I'm gonna go up and set the length value of the cylinder pretty low so I can see exactly where the z-axis of the projection is supposed to be and then just use the rotate sliders to get them into position so I'm gonna flip the you can flip the z-axis of the cylinder here pretty easily so it's just what I just did now and sort of rotate it into place it looks already pretty good it's a little bit off and I'm going to use again the offset sliders which have a different slider range than the main sliders just to massage it a bit into place and that looks pretty good and a little bit off again that a bit more center all right and now I can change the length and you can see the axis is aligned change the UV scale a bit however in this case you can see I've got I'm getting a bit of spill of the projection onto the other parts of the objects, which I don't want. So that's, that is because the radius is set quite high. So if I turn this down, the first thing you will notice is that your UV scale changes. But at a certain point, the projection will not spill over onto the other objects again. If you don't want to chain, have your UV scale changed, you can turn on the lock UV scale. And then any change you make will uh, not affect the UV scale. It'll be locked to whatever the default value was. And yeah, I mean, now we've got again a perfectly aligned projection. So this is the end of the first part of the video. The second part, like I said before, is going to focus on all of the different options that are available inside of the projection node. That's it for now. Thanks for listening and See you next time.